Okay, uh, let's uh, let's talk RoboTaxi. Uh, RoboTaxi launched 16 days ago. Uh, they started to expand it to more people, not just the uh, early access users. <clears throat> uh, just regular people who signed up on the website, asked for it, are now being given access to the app. They did the very first app update to the RoboTaxi app. You can now adjust pickup location. They did some design improvements. They dis they now display the remaining wait time at pickup in the app and live activity. So obviously, it's they're going to continue to improve the app. Uh, and uh, but we haven't heard them expand the geofence at this point. In the meantime, uh, so far it's looking very good. Uh, there ha there hasn't been any major incidents, and all the things that uh, the news and Tesla Q is trying to point out are really minor little things uh, at this point. So how are you guys feeling about this rollout? Are you guys uh, thinking it's delayed? Are you guys thinking, you know, this is the, the a great launch? And uh, what, what's your what's your analysis of what you've seen so far? Yeah, well, please, so. on one hand, you know, I would consider it a small success in the sense that we haven't seen any major crashes. We haven't seen any major injuries. Um, you know, at such a small scale, it would be really bad if you saw those things. But overall, things have gone off pretty much without an issue. You look at the kinds of issues that Waymo see routinely, you know, getting stuck in the middle of the road, doing strange things. This actually went very well, considering, you know, this is the first time a Pure Vision system is launching. Now, at the same time, it still is very limited. The safety monitors are there. The geofence doesn't include downtown Austin and other areas. I'm excited to see progress on that. We haven't seen it yet. It'll probably be really a few months, I think, before the safety monitors come out. So there will be other big milestones um, that will really be sort of technical achievements in the sense of the model achieving an accuracy level where they feel good doing that and there aren't any safety issues. But, um, you know, the fact that we see it operating more in rain now. When I was there, they would kind of stop the service during the rain. They seem to be allowing it to operate more in inclement weather. Some people initially even reported having to get out of the car when it rained. They don't seem to be doing that now. They're expanding not just to people on X, but even just to random people, people who don't even have a Tesla who signed up on the website. So it's good to see them continuing to send out more invites, let more people in. Um, but overall, still a lot of milestones to go before I think you can really sort of turn Wall Street's head. This is a pilot. You know, it's a pilot where there still is someone who's able to push a stop button if something goes wrong. But it's an absolutely huge step. Next steps are really going to be getting the software out to customer cars expanding the service, sending out more invites, expanding the service area, removing the safety monitors, announcing the next cities where they're going to launch. But I think they have a formula here that they can definitely take to Arizona, that they can take to California, and there's going to be a lot of other exciting announcements to come. Anybody else? Jeff? I don't know if I told you, Omar, yeah, I might have mentioned it a little bit earlier, but I, I've been driving five months on my Hardware 3 Model uh, model 3, and I'm sorry, Hardware 4 Model 3, and it's been no disengagements. And I just went to Vancouver, Canada this weekend, <laughs> all over Vancouver, came back. As far as I'm concerned, RoboTaxi could have been launched for me in the last five months in Portland, Seattle, and Canada. <laughs> It really works, uh, no issues. And so, of course, it's all about the the uh, the numbers. But, uh, you know, I just interviewed James Dalma, and he's extremely um, optimistic. And, he, you know, like every two weeks, I get an update, right? You, we've all, our cars are getting updates for FSD. And it's like these are five, 50 minute, 55 minute long downloads of these new updates. So they've been improving the, the, the FSD just in the last five months. Remember the first time I drove to Vancouver, my wife was complaining that the car seemed to ping pong a lot. It would make change lane changes too often. And we just didn't realize, but this time around, same standard FSD, not chill. And it did not do that anymore. It was much more uh, 
just it just feels safer, feels much more comfortable. So you can physically see, physically and feel and see the actual improvement in just the same software we've been using. So even though we haven't had a, an update, a version update, the app really has improved. I think that the, the features improved. Are you noticing something similar like that, Omar? I mean, I'm also noticing very impressive drives. I think it's important to note that it is still supervised. It's not ready to be RoboTaxi. Yeah. We may see FSD supervised be really good where, you know, it's driving us for hours or days without any intervention. The key to RoboTaxi is really, uh, can a thousand or a million guys all drive for hours and none of them have an intervention? Then it's really ready to take the driver out. But it's clear that they are really at a robo taxi like experience i mean i feel like i'm using a cyber cab when i pull my model 3 out of my garage with summon push a button for where i want to go and it just takes me all the way pulls out of my drive and then parks i'm like this is what a cyber cab is going to feel like there's really no reason for the steering wheel and pedals to be there at all and of course this is the older model it's not the robo taxi model it's not the four times larger model that they're going to ship later this year. There are improvements coming that are going to make it even more intelligent. So this is really sort of the signal to focus on. While everybody's worried about what Elon is tweeting and what Elon is going to do, not enough people are paying attention to what the products are doing. And I think that's a really powerful opportunity to be here where robo taxis are launched, but everyone sadly is still distracted by other issues and not really noticing what we're seeing in our cars. Yeah. What's your thoughts on Grok? So it looks like that the uh, software in the cars is going to have Grok. They found code in there that XAIs in the app, that there's a ability to log in to XAI, which is Grok's, you know, the ability to do that. And then um, Nick Cruz Patain, had a post and he said, my guess is Tesla will announce Tesla Grok integration during the Grok 4 live stream uh, Wednesday night. And Elon, apparently he liked that post. So he's looking like he's he's agreeing that Tesla will, he will announce that the Grok will be uh, integrated into the, the cars. So the likelihood that Grok's actually coming to the cars is very high now. And then what's your thinking about the, you know, the value of that and how will I don't think it's going to move the stock, but, you know, how should uh, investors and how should, you know, just us who are driving our cars can all of a sudden now have Grok in it? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's almost a certainty. I would put it even above highly likely. We're yeah. seeing the code in the app. Green the Only has posted screenshots of what the interface looks like. You'd be able to scan a QR code, link your X account to your Tesla, and then talk to Grok just like you can in the Grok app. So, I'm really excited for this. I think it's going to be fun um, when the FSDs beep. Look at the road and you can't use your phone. You'll be able to talk to Grok, ask it about anything, say, hey, what's Herbert tweeting? Yeah. You know, what's Je what's Jeff tweeting? Um, and I think it's just going to make the product that much better. You know, you see these people who are like falling in love with their LLM, <laughs> asking ChatGPT yeah. to marry them. Yeah. It really does create a bond. Uh, with the product more to be able to talk to it, right? This isn't just a self-driving robot. You can actually talk to it. You can say, hey, uh, I want to get some dinner. I don't really know what I'm in the mood for. You can have a conversation with it in the way that we've gotten used to. So I think it's going to be a really fun feature. Um, I think it's great for both Tesla and XAI. For Tesla, it's making the products better for XAI. They're going to get sort of an exclusive spot as the LLM provider in the car. And it looks like they're going to have different voice options. They're going to have all the different personality options, assistant, tutor, unhinged mode. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm really excited. I think they're going to demo it tomorrow. It's going to be really fun and uh, make car rides a lot more entertaining, I La think. Langu and, learning languages, language tutor is pretty cool. I might yeah, do that one. Yeah, that's a cool one, yeah. yeah. While you're driving. But I wonder how much it would be integrated into FSD itself. Um, you know, like park here drive it through the driveway, start now. You think it might do things like that or probably not at the beginning, right? Longer term, I think it's inevitable for it to become more deeply integrated into FSD. 
Waymo really leans on sort of their Gemini models for autonomy quite a bit. And um, right now, probably not. You know, right now we're probably looking at just kind of talking to Grok. If they have some basic vehicle commands, I'll be impressed. Um, you know, the next step from there would be kind of hooking it up to the vehicle's cameras. So just like I can upload an image to Grok, yeah. what if I could say, hey, uh, take a look at that IHOP over there and, yeah. you know, tell, tell me about it or whatever. That, I think, is the next step. Um, it could be useful for self-driving, but the architecture right now where it's going to be going out over the Internet and connecting to Grok over the Internet, mm -hmm. where inference is going to be done on the cloud, you can't rely on that for self-driving because of the nature of Internet connections. But let's say you got stuck or something and you weren't sure what to do. You could maybe kind of um, use something like that, but that's probably going to be something that's uh, longer term rather than something that ships on day one. They would want some version of that Grok intelligence that was sort of distilled into a smaller model and could run on the car and could bring that sort of world knowledge to the FSD system in a way that can run locally. Mm, yeah, I can't wait for that. That's going to be big. That's tomorrow night, Wednesday night, they'll announce that. And uh, yeah, and uh, he Elon did also confirm that Grok is already on Optimus. So pretty, pretty high chance that it's going to be in the cars as well. There's no, uh, no doubt at this point. Yeah, like you said, they found a code already. So, <clears throat> so RoboTaxi, it's 16 days. Uh, like we said, it seems like things are, uh, you know, as good of a launch as it can be. We're waiting for it to expand in um, the geofence, but we're already seeing the these these cars driving around. James Dalma said that uh, those are not lidars. When he takes a close look at those uh, tripods on top of those Model Ys that are driving around downtown Austin, those are not lidars. Those are like he looks like a uh, six or eight cameras pointing downwards, camera arrays. Uh, but that's still, regardless, that's still a sign, a signal that very likely they're going to expand to downtown Austin uh, sooner or later. So we're waiting for that to happen. And then we'll keep, we'll keep, uh, I'm sure it's going to be very, very slow. So I'm not expecting much for RoboTaxi, but just, you know, cross fingers, things are looking pretty good. Any uh, comments about RoboTaxi, Jeff or Alexandra? Not from me. Yeah. Alexandra, you should have come. <laughs> Are you going to drive I've to Austin? I, this one is day? A big, it's a big regret. I have yeah. to say it's a big regret. But I mean, hope I'll be there for the shareholder meeting and I hope that we can get one then. And then I have to be with somebody who has an Apple phone. You can all make fun of me that yeah. I'm still on Android. I'll buy you one, okay? But no, we do not know when the shareholder meeting is. We do not know when that is. So oh, no, now it's September and it could even be much later. Oh, you're just guessing September, right? Yeah, you're saying it, the earliest could be, it would be September. Well, I mean, once we have the proxy, it's eight weeks later and we don't have the proxy yet. So that makes it easy. Okay. But no you, proxy, no shareholder meeting. But you're thinking that they should between. delay that anyway. So maybe we don't, how, how much, how far could they delay? There are, two, there are two schools. There are two schools. One is to do just a shareholder meeting on the basics. There are three, share, uh, three directors have to be reconfirmed. It's Kathleen Wilson-Thompson. It's... Um, Joe Gibia and it's, uh, I don't remember, there are three of them who have their cycle coming up to be reelected. And then there's always some, you know, shareholder requests and stuff like that. So, so there are two schools, one saying, let's just do now relatively quickly the basics and then do a special shareholder meeting like they did, if I remember right, it was in 2014. Um, for just the compensation package whenever that is ready. So that is one possibility, but that's not what they announced in April. In April in the 10Q, they said, we're working on a comp package, on a new comp package, and we put in place a special committee. That special committee mentions takes away any stress to do the shareholder meeting at a certain moment in time. That certain moment in time would have been middle of June 2025 because it always is about the same time than last year. There's a little flexibility, but very little. But as soon as you mention special committee, you have won the chewing, game, chewing gum game, how I call it, because now, because you're in a special committee, you can delay it as long as you need as it. I mean, you, you can't want? a whole year. Well, not until no, not until next year. No, okay. it has. I, I think it has to be in this calendar year. Okay. So, so that's where the two theories now come. 
saying, okay, maybe they just don't address the the compensation package and just say we, we need more time so let's do the basics and just do the basics or they wait as long as needed and then they do it relatively late this year but like i said the earliest possible is now september so it, something is going to happen between september and december that's for sure okay there you go well we'll see you there <laughs> we'll see if you there invite, well we're going to yeah. see each other at the um that's the owner silicon valley thing um the event that's going to be in San Francisco. Exactly. At the X takeover. I hope I see many of you. Yes. That'll be good. It would be unlikely, but because that's the end of this month, that it would be great if they launched a, a, a pilot there, but that's very, very unlikely. All right. Chances of them launching Robotaxi in San Francisco before they expand Austin. Yeah, I mean, that would really need that. It's not going to happen that soon. We'd see yeah. permits and stuff. They'll yeah, probably yeah. start in Palo Alto first. Well, yeah, that's the thing. They don't need permits because the Palo Alto city said they can just use our permit. Tesla can just well, use our permit. unfortunately, it doesn't really work that way. The autonomous driving is really handled by California state, and the cities really don't have any control over it. Um, so... You know, the uh, there have been cases, for example, where San Francisco or Los Angeles actually said, well, we don't really want these autonomous cars here. And because the California Public Utility Commission and the DMV gave them their permits, there's nothing they can really do about it. So it's really the California state uh, government that matters in terms of whether an autonomous service is able to run on the road or not. Okay. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate this big conversation about the board and uh, the America party and what's going to happen to compensation plan. Appreciate you, Alexandra, Jeff, and Omar, as always. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you guys again next week. Thank you, Herbert. Okay. Bye. Thank you. I've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the Tesla investor. Please check it out. Simply go to my website at herbertong.com.